right, so it is now 7.15. I'm going to start drawing Popeye. I'll try to keep an eye out for chat, or I hope they have chat available. got somebody here but I missed who it was all right good evening everybody so I'm gonna be drawing just kind of quick uh, quick drawings of Popeye that sound you heard was me dropping a bottle my goal because on January 17th 2024 is the uh, 95th anniversary of the first appearance of Popeye the sailor and to celebrate that, I had this uh, probably foolish idea of drawing 95 drawings of Popeye, or at least Popeye and Popeye characters. Just kind of quick, I figure, because today is the fourth, I have 13 days. To draw 95 pictures. So I have to average about six per day. Feel free to uh, comment. If you have any comments or questions, uh, I have the chat on, but I don't know if it worked. I don't see any sign of it anywhere. I've only done live video a couple times. And for some reason, my eyes are horribly blurry, so I'm having some trouble seeing today. This isn't going to be a very long video. But I'll probably I'll try to do six pictures tonight. So that's the first one. So Popeye started in the comic strips in 1929 in a comic strip called Thimble Theater, which first appeared in 1919 and was created by, an <coughs> by a cartoonist named E.C. Seagar. And Thimble Theater actually started off with not Popeye, but Popeye's eventual... girlfriend olive oil so olive oil is older than popeye at least in terms of being around longer
I am not the biggest fan of the smile, but oh well. She's not meant to be an attractive woman. In later cartoons, like from the 60s, 50s and 60s, they, the, um, the animation companies decide to pretty up Olive and make her look cute, which I was never a fan of. That's two drawings. That was Olive Oil, and along with Olive Oil in the original Thimble Theater comic strip was her boyfriend, Ham Gravy. No, I drew that badly. Oh, well. Ham Gravy was a uh, cheapskate and not a very good guy. And when Popeye came into the scene and became very popular for, with the readers and Bravey disappeared and Popeye became the love interest for her. olive oil but somebody who stuck around why is this not focusing yeah, that's a little bit better um But another main character from Thimble Theater was Olive Oil, her boyfriend, Ham Gravy, and her brother, Castor Oil. Castor Oil was always going for get-rich-quick schemes. And the reason I made him in the spot he's in is because he's a shorter character. Eventually, he became a, a private investigator, or a detective. I don't know about private investigator. But he stuck around for a while in Thimble Theater, longer than... Uh, Ham Gravy did. But it was actually... Castor Oil who hired Popeye originally. I'm already halfway done with my quota for the day. Now, I'm not going to draw the same, you know, my goal is to draw 95 pictures in the next 13 days, which averages about six drawings per day. But there aren't that many characters in Popeye and Kimble Theater. So I'm going to be doing some uh, multiples of different characters. Oops, forgot to draw his hand. And because this is just, you know, these are just quick sketches, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail of these. Now, along with um, olive oil, castor oil, and ham gravy, there was also the oil parents. Nana oil and coal oil. I will be going a little bit slower with them because I don't draw them as much. I mean, I don't really draw Casker and 
hand gravy that often either. And I can't draw the oil parents separate. They should be together. Caster takes after his mom in height. Olive oil is meant to be tall, so I don't know where she gets it from because dad isn't really that uh, that much taller than the mom. Man oil. And a lot of these characters you can find in the live-action Popeye movie from 1980 with uh, Shelley Duvall and Robin Williams. Technically, Ham Gravy's in the movie, but he's not really shown as being the boyfriend. So how many is that? That's four. I think the next main character that showed up was Wimpy. If you've ever heard the term, I will gladly pay you Tuesday for a hamburger today, it's because of Jay Wellington Wimpy, who started off as a, as a referee for a boxing match that Popeye was fighting in. fun thing about some of these characters like Wimpy and Olive Oil and Popeye are they're all based on people who were in the town that E.C. Seagar grew up in. Ooh, I drew that hat really badly. But it won't. Um, Olive Oil was based on a woman, I think she worked at the local um, general store. Wimpy was based on the theater owner that gave E.C. Seagar kind of his, be his uh, beginning as an artist because he would let him draw advertisements on the sidewalk in front of the theater. And Popeye was based on a... Um, a retired sailor who, who who did smoke a pipe and who was missing an eye. There's Wimpy. Who's next? Uh, let's go with Sea uh, Hag. Sea Hag is actually. Popeye's oldest enemy. There's a couple different versions of Sea Hag, and eventually I'll draw them both, but this is closer to the original. Ooh, drew that weird. I don't usually go straight for pen, but with these characters, I feel uh, confident enough to draw directly with pen, even though you can't tell because I'm doing such a bad job on this. But the Sea Hag was around more and first 
before uh, Bluto. Bluto actually wasn't in the comic strip until later. He only showed up for a very short amount of time. He was only in the comic strip for maybe a week or two. And in comic strips, you know, that's... If it was one week, then it would have been... Uh, if he was in the comic strip for one week, he was in it for six days. Because he didn't show up in any of the uh, Sunday comics. And with Sea Hag is her pet vulture. Just as evil as her. Not a very good drawing. Unfortunately, the cartoons ne didn't have Sea Hag until the 1950s, and the quality of the cartoons were not very good. There are some other characters that show up that didn't get enough. Oh, you know what? I forgot about the goon. The goon came around the same, roughly the same time as the Sea Hag. I don't know if it, I'll, I'd have to look it up again. I've read all the stories, but I can't remember. No, I think the, the goon was the first me, the first, like, what do you call it? Um, assistant to the Sea Hag. Interesting thing about the goon is the goon was supposed to be in, was a villain, but because the comic strips were very popular amongst kids, and the publishers were get the publishers getting uh, letters from parents saying that the goon was was scaring their kid their children. Instead of ECCR, like canceling the the goon, what he did is he made the goon a good a good character and turned it into a female. It wasn't. I don't know if there was supposed to be any type of a gender to the goon originally, but eventually. ECCR, the creator of the comic strip, turned the goon into Alice the goon. And she wound up uh, betraying the sea hag and became friends with Popeye and actually um, became the uh, caretaker to Popeye's adopted son, Sweepy. Do, do, do. 
Now, if I don't do a live video every day of the Popeye drawings that I do, I'll, I will at least post the pictures of the drawings that I do each day because if you uh, missed from earlier, my goal is to draw um, 95 Popeye related drawings in the next 13 days to celebrate the 95th anniversary of Popeye. Because the, the 95th anniversary is January 17th, 2024. So there's Sweepy, Popeye's adopted son. There was another character that's not uh, not very well known at all, which was a uh, a thought out caveman that also was the uh, like the lackey to the sea hag at one point, and his name was Tor. And in the comic strip, he was a pretty uh, not popular character, but he was a character that was around for a while. But he wasn't very smart, but he was very strong. And he befriended Popeye and Popeye's friends. Went on a few adventures with them. Ooh, I drew that wrong. Mm -hmm. I'll just darken over that later. But he was a giant figure. I think he has a couple hairs. Another friend of Popeye's was a character named Oscar. He was basically uh, a buffoon. He's always getting things wrong. And a major overbite. Bull or cats were pretty popular back then. The Oscar was around a lot in the comic strips. things that kind of skyrocketed the uh, the Popeye mythos I don't know if I'm saying that right but uh, what is Popeye's strength and a lot of people think that he gets his strength from spinach but no he gets his healthiness from spinach he got his strength from a, a little bird a little magical bird called a wiffle hen her name is Bernice the wiffle hen and what he, uh, if you rubbed her feathers on her head, she would grant you a wish. And Popeye's wish at the time, because he, um, he was gambling a lot, and he 
Um, he had a feeling that Papa had a feeling that he was going to um, be suffering some consequences of winning all these games because Popeye was using the wiffle hen to cheat, basically. Because back in the day, Popeye was a uh, wasn't the the stand-up guy that we know of, know him as now. So what Popeye did was he um, he rubbed the feathers on. Bernice the Wiffle Hen's head to grant him uh, immortality. So, in, so what happened was this guy that he was gambling with um, got mad and decided to go after Popeye. And Popeye took 17 shots to the body and, uh, and lived. And that's how he got his invincibility. But he's always been super strong without spinach. It's not the best uh, Wiffle Hen picture. Another character that's very well known in the Popeye world is a magical animal called Eugene the Jeep. Eugene the Jeep was actually a gift to olive oil from her uncle. I can't remember the uncle's name right now. But the Jeep is able to kind of predict, basically predict the future. So a lot of people, including Wimpy, were very interested in obtaining Eugene the Jeep to be able to gamble and whatnot. And Eugene the Jeep was also able to disappear because he's from the fourth dimension which in the 1930s was, a, to me, in the 1930s, talking about the fourth dimension is a huge, um, is an amazing thing to think about. People thinking about the fourth dimension back in the 30s. And just an FYI, I'm not looking at any reference material. These are just, I can't remember people's names. I can't remember what I did yesterday, but I do remember how to draw these different characters. I know what they look like. I said this is Bluto here. Bluto wasn't in the comic strips very much, but when he was introduced, was around the time that Fleischer Studios started to uh, start working on the Popeye cartoons, and they didn't. Popeye didn't have like a. I don't know why they didn't cho choose the sea hag. Maybe because she was too scary. I don't know. But uh, they wanted to have a villain or an enemy of Popeye. So they chose Bluto because Bob Bluto was just in the comic strip. But E.C. Seagar never used Bluto after the first storyline with him. Other Popeye, art, um, Popeye artists and Popeye writers used Bluto. In the stories, and some of them, uh, and in the cartoons, they made they had Bluto, but eventually they made Blue, Brutus. And there's a lot of different theories as to why they would decide to go with Brutus instead of Bluto. Uh, some people thought there was a copyright thing; others thought it was a you know 
an accident. They thought that they couldn't use the name Bluto because of Pluto. Well, it it kind of depends on where you get your information from. And there's Bluto. So there's a. Let me see. So that's 33 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I might as well make it 15. Uh, who am I missing? Oh, King Belozo. He's an old friend of Popeye's. A little pickle nose. Next time I'll draw in his uh, Popeye's uh, dad, Poop Deck Pappy. And I'll be adding some more of these same characters again. King Blizzard was always a, a worry wart. So if you like the video, uh, keep an eye out for any other uh, recordings or any other live streaming. I might stream tomorrow. I might the day after. I don't know yet. Depends on how things go. But right now I've got 15 out of 95 pictures drawn. I'm not going to do the math because that's too much for my wee little head. So have yourself a great night. And I will maybe see you in the near future. Bye.